There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down. Let me just try and bring up these slides. Here we go. Okay, cool. So this is what we're going to be covering on the call. And in case you have to leave early, uh, we're going to be recording this. So we'll send out a replay um, after this as well. But what we're going to be covering is first, we're going to look inside Create Studio Pro. Then I'm going to show you how you can get access to Create Studio Pro today. And we've got one really super special surprise upgrade offer that we're going to be uh, making available on this call as well, which I think you're really going to like. So we basically developed Create Studio Pro um, based on our own experience uh, with working with Create Studio. Um, obviously, you guys have got Create Studio and and like when you create a product, uh, after you launch it, you figure out some things that you might want to do better next time um, or some things that are missing. And so what we wanted to do is basically improve it. Um, and so based on a lot of the things that we, we were missing, we, we kind of recreated it. Um, we retouched the UI and everything like that. And also based on your feedback as users, uh, we took that into consideration as well. And so what we've done is just basically... Um, yeah, built a brand new product. So here's what's new in Create Studio Pro. Well, basically, as I said, everything. We built uh, Create Studio from scratch, um, Create Studio Pro from scratch, and it includes a, a brand new interface that we've really thoughtfully designed uh, to make editing super simple. So when you when you download Create Studio Pro, you'll, you'll realize how um, using it is going to speed up your editing and animating so much more compared to the current version of Create Studio. Um, yeah, everything's just so much more uh, smartly designed and, and it's just gonna really make making videos, uh, you know, a breeze for you guys. So one of the first features I wanna cover is global media libraries. So now you can import media. So let's say for example, you've got a logo um, or you've got footage that you use often. What you can do is import it into Create Studio in your project media uh, folder. And if you right click on it, you can then save it into your global media library and you can create folders. So if you've got logos, you can just simply import it once into Create Studio Pro and then right click save to global and it will be in Create Studio Pro for all your projects moving forward. So it just, um, yeah, it's something that, you're, that I really appreciate. I'm sure you guys will as well. And we've also got new integrations with Giphy. So now you can, uh, you know, search through Giphy on the sidebar. You can uh, import animated GIFs as well as uh, animated stickers, which are really cool. Uh, they're like transparent ones, so you, you have to grab that. And also we've uh, integrated with a site called Cover, which is basically a, a stock, a, a royalty-free stock uh, media site. And um, the footage on there is really, really good. So you, I think you're going to love this. Um, also, we've rebuilt the timeline. Uh, this is like a really big improvement that we've added in. Um, basically, in Create Studio now, you have to drop down each layer and you can only have layers on one track um, so we wanted to basically make it a lot easier for you guys and so now you can add multiple layers onto one track there's no need to drop down layers because uh, all the animations are now uh, visible directly on uh, your media so you'll be able to see you've got transitions you can add you can add keyframes you can add uh, motion presets directly onto the layer so you can instantly see it without having to drop down and up uh, which yeah will speed up your editing. Um, you can also uh, add, uh, you can basically cut layers as well, which was a, a feature that we had lots of requests for, being able to like cut uh, layers. So you can do that. Um, and yeah, we've got, you, when you when you use time, you're going to really love this. So next thing, uh, composition. So this is uh, another improvement that we've added in. So before you could group layers inside of Create Studio. Um, now you can group them as compositions and basically animate your group. So 
currently in Create Studio, you can only animate single layers, but now you can animate an entire group and you can create multiple groups within groups. Um, you can mask your groups as well. So you can create some really cool animations and, and I'll have some cool tutorials on that as well. Um, and another cool thing as well with the group. So anytime you group layers, so as you're about to see on the screen, there's that lower third type of animation with the image and you've got your text and you've got your box like that. So anytime you group any layers on the right settings panel, all the layers are visible. So you can quickly make edits to the group outside of the group. So you don't have to go into the group. You can make some quick edits. And if you click on any of the labels, so in this example, the picture label is being clicked, it gives you some more options as well. So you can adjust the scale opacity. And with the text as well, you can adjust fonts uh, directly outside of the group. Uh, and you've got a whole bunch of settings there as well. So um, cool. And, uh, and just let me, I was going to quickly go back to chat. So is everyone still on the right page? Can you see compositions? Is everything looking good? Just to make sure. Okay, great. Cool. So yeah, composition is a, a massive um, improvement that we've added in, and I'm sure you're going to love working with these. And it just really opens you up to uh, more possibilities when you're animating and being able to group things and animate the entire group together. Another thing is uh, our Studio Builder. So uh, currently with, with our Create Studio Studio Builder panel, like you have to go into the group and then you have to go into the subcategory group. And then if you want to go back out of it, you have to go back out of the groups. Um, so right now, like with our Studio Builder, we've got a global search. So now you can, if you go into all and you search, you can search the entire Studio Builder panel for any assets and it will come up with whatever keywords you, you put in. Uh, also, the navigation is a lot easier. So you can, um, you know, you'll see the sub, you'll see the categories on the left panel and you have subcategories inside of there. But you can quick, quickly search uh, and switch through categories without having to go back and forth, which makes things a lot easier. Um, and you can also enlarge, like drag the panel to make it bigger if you want to see the assets a bit bigger as well. So here's another example of it. So you're about to see on the left sidebar, the titles, animated titles panel is open. And underneath that titles panel, you've got some subcategories and you can simply click on those subcategories to quickly navigate through, um, download those assets and drag them onto your video. Um, and as you're about to see as well on the, that text title when it says when nothing goes right go left you've also got those the easy edit panel on the right to quickly edit your text which is really cool another thing we've built uh, is a render queue and this is um, going to speed up your video projects as well so now you can go ahead and create videos add it to your render queue and then go ahead and create your next video while your video is rendering which uh, yeah I can see a lot of people liking that um, so you can add multiple videos uh, to the render queue, as many as you like, and you can also export images. So if you want to take a, a screenshot basically of, um, you know, like a, of a frame of your video to use as a thumbnail, you can go ahead and do that as well to export your, your frame as a, as a JPEG or a PNG uh, image. And yeah, it basically opens up this render queue and yeah, you can keep creating your videos while they're rendering. Now, another uh, well, basically brand new thing that we've built into Create Studio Pro is components. So these are like smart elements that you can drag and drop onto your video and they come with pre-made uh, animations and presets to really speed up uh, your animating. And the cool thing with components is we've, we've got lots of component ideas that we've got on the background that we're gonna be adding in. And yeah, we're, we're gonna be adding in so many more components um, over the coming months to really speed up your workflow. And for example, one of the components is a progress bar. So in the past, you would have to go ahead and add like the rectangle shape, animate the the uh, the, the bar to, to go ahead with your video. But now with the components, you can simply drag a progress bar onto your video and it auto resizes to the size of your content on the timeline. And it comes with the animation done for you. You can go ahead and choose different presets uh, to change the design and you can also customize the design of the preset so you can change the colors you can resize it and basically you have lots of uh, customization options with this uh, component another one is the carousel so this one's a super cool uh, component and basically what you can do is drag a, a carousel component onto your video and it comes with pre-made animations and you've got 
loads of different presets that you can select. So you can have like a carousel that's going vertically or horizontally. You can have it, uh, you can basically customize everything with a, with the carousel as well. So you've got lots of customization options and you can just, and you can simply just drag and drop images onto your carousel and it will basically animate for you. Um, and you've got loads of customization options. As I said, like you can adjust the easing of the animation, um, but it's all done for you to make things super simple uh, and really speed up the way that you animate. So currently we've got this carousel with images and we're going to be adding in a carousel with a video carousel. So you can drag and drop videos as well. Um, and have that all done for you as well. What do you guys think about that? If you just type in the chat box, if you're liking what you see so far. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Amazing comments, cool. Great, yeah. So we've been working on this like hard for about a year or so. Um, and and yeah, we're excited to bring it out. So let's continue with the slides. Another uh feature we've added in is, is drag and drop transitions. So you can basically uh, download these transitions in the transitions panel and simply drag and drop it onto any layer. So whether it be an image or a video, you can even drag these transitions onto text and shape layers. And it just works like, uh, it basically animates and transitions the layer. So these, these are a brand new kind of concept uh, that we hadn't had in the first version. Um, and you can also choose whether you want to transition in and out by simply uh, selecting the switch on the right panel. Uh, so let's go ahead. Another cool thing that we've added in is you can go ahead and save your own presets. So if you go ahead and create, uh, or if you go and select a motion preset animation, what you can now do is open up the advanced settings and you've basically got your own kind of animation panel that you can use to build your own animations. Um, so you can adjust the starting point uh, of different properties like the rotation, the scale, the position. Um, you've got lots of customization options and you can tweak them. And when you like an animation that you create, you can go ahead and then save it as a preset. And when it's saved as, as a preset on your saved uh, presets folder, you can then go ahead and use that animation on all your layers moving forward as well. So this is really gonna speed things up and give you yeah, a really cool way that you can go ahead um, and build your own animations. Another thing we've built in with characters. So we've basically gone ahead and we had to recreate them uh, because of the new system that we've got. But now you can go ahead and loop um, your actions. So basically all the actions are loopable. So you can extend the duration and they'll continually loop the action. Uh, you can also remove the in and out part of the uh, action. So if you, for example, if you've got a, a character who's sitting down um, on the computer just typing, Often in the past, the character will be standing up, then he would sit down and there'll be the transition in and then he'll do, his, he'll do his typing, then he would basically stand up again. So what you can now do is uh, remove that part, that action. So you could just have the character continually sitting down working on his computer, which is a really cool kind of update. Um, also the characters, uh, I think about 75% smaller in file size. So we've really reduced the file size uh, for you, which means that the downloads will be a lot faster and it won't be so heavy um, on your computer. Um, and also the characters have been redesigned in high resolution. So up to 4K, you're going to have really uh, high resolution characters. Um, and over the next like one or two or few, few weeks, we're basically going to be adding in all the rest of the characters. So we've got a lot of characters in there already. Um, but we're still adding them in as uh, basically each day as they're being um, finalized. Another new uh, thing we've built in is screen recording. So uh, this, this is about 99, oh, let's say 95% done. We just got to um, implement it into the UI and do a bit of testing, but we've built the screen recording component. So now you can record your, record your screen, webcam, and audio. And this is going to yeah enable you to, create training videos um, and yeah, build up, uh, you know, a different type of video inside of Create Studio. We've also got loads of other um, features that I'm not gonna cover one by one, but we've got things like, you can, we've got a pen tool now, so you can create your own shapes. Um, we've got grids, we've got action safe grids. You can, you can manually create the grid size and the threshold. Um, as I said, you've got Im image exports, you can add filters onto your media. Uh, with the 
with the new text box we've created, you can have like a word wrap. So you can create like a paragraph box with a word wrap. Um, you've got a multicolor gradient. So now you can add not just like a two color gradient, but you can add as many colors to a gradient as you like. Um, we've got also a keyboard shortcuts panel, and these are really going to be helpful. So make sure to check those out. Uh, you'll be able to see this little keyboard icon on the editor and click on that. You'll be able to see a whole bunch of all the, all the shortcuts we've got. Um, we've also got the custom font importer, which is a lot simpler, uh, really easy to import custom fonts now into Create Studio. Um, we've got different effects, color correction. You can add a blur effect onto your media. We've got a turbulence kind of effect, which is really cool. Um, we've got improved masking. Uh, and yeah, we're, got, we're gonna be adding in uh, these LUTs kind of filters as well. We've already built that. Um, we've got a, a load more as well that we've, uh, you know, adding in to the software. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to get it out to you guys, um, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, so you guys could have it before we release it to the public. So you guys are probably wondering, like, how much is it going to cost? Well, when we go live to the public, we're going to be charging uh, $99 a year uh, for the software. Um, but for all Create Studio users, we've got a little surprise. <laughs> we're going to make it free uh, for everyone. All our Create Studio users, you guys get it for free. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> Hi, in this video, we're gonna run through the carousel component and I'm gonna show you how you can use it to create a showcase for your product images or just to reveal any images in a really nice animated slider like so. Great, so let's go ahead and recreate something similar like this. I'm just gonna delete this one here. And on the left sidebar, you see we've got the components tab. So if I go over here, I'm going to go grab the carousel and drag it on to the canvas. Now we're going to be adding loads more components to really speed up your workflow as time goes by. So for now, what we're going to do is just preview this and you'll be able to see we've got this nice animation. So what you can also do is choose different presets and we've got a whole bunch of nice preset designs and animations. So if you want something like this with like a continual scroll, you can choose that. I'm going to go back to this one here and what I'm going to do is just bring it up a bit and bring it down like so. So we've got that same kind of size like so. Cool. So now to replace the images is really simple. What you want to do is go to media and you'll be able to see your images that you've imported. So if you haven't imported any, just click on import and grab your images and simply drag and drop them onto the carousel. So it's really that simple. I've got like a, also a logo that I want to add to show you how to uh, add yeah, kind of logo reveals. So now that I've got this, what I'm going to do is just preview that to give you a quick view. Okay, cool. So over on the right panel, you're about to see underneath presets, images, we can edit the individual slides on the carousel. So what you can do is reorder the slides by simply dragging the slides up and down. And this is the first slide on the carousel, and this is the last one. So you'll be able to see when we get to the end, we've got the logo like so. Now with each of the individual slides, you can make individual edits. So for this logo, what I want to do is make the logo smaller. And to do that, this is great for logos or PNG images. You can simply select the scaling and choose contain. And when you do that, you'll see we've got the option to adjust the padding for this image. So I could bring it down like so, and that looks a lot better on the slide. And another thing I also wanna do is adjust this slide's pause, okay? So instead of it going from that slide to the next one, what I can do is bring up the pause, and let's say I want it to stay for about four seconds. And what that's gonna do now is, once it transitions to the slide, it's just gonna remain on that slide like so. You can also adjust the speed of the transition for individual slides or go over to the global setting and you can adjust the transition speed. So let's say you want it to go a lot faster. You could just bring down the speed and let's just preview that. You can also adjust the pause for each of the slides. So let's say you want it to stay on the image for about two seconds or so.
And you can also do things like adjust the corner radius of your slides. And this is great if you've got a cover image like so, you can bring this up. And if you actually just scale this like so, you could go ahead and bring up the corner radius and make a circular type slide. What we're going to do is just, I'll just bring this back up and bring this down vertically. And what we can do is also adjust the side slides, okay? So before they come onto the screen, you will be able to see we've got these options over here. So the side scaling basically shows the size of the slides next to the main slide before it comes on. So you can bring it up like this. And when this animates on, you'll be able to see that it just kind of comes in like so. You can also adjust the opacity of the slide. So if we can take it down to 0%, this is going to be, look good for this kind of video. And we can also bring that side scaling down as well. And the side padding. The side padding basically is the space between each of the slides on the side. So if we just preview this now. We've got that nice animation. And I might bring that side scaling down a bit more up the padding a bit like so and you've also got the option to adjust how many loops that this entire carousel goes through so at the moment it's just going through once showing the images once like this but if we make it for example to two loops you best see that it goes around twice and you can have the same carousel going around twice like so you can also adjust the orientation so the direction in which the slides animate so let's say we want to make it vertical we can adjust it like so and you can choose the direction of the animation so we can go for example forwards like so and last thing you can also adjust the easing of the transition animation so at the moment we've got a nice smooth type of easing if you want to create that continual loop what you could do is click linear and maybe remove the tr uh, the pause and you have to see they've got this kind of bouncing animation so playing around with the easing you can really create unique looking animations for your carousel so it's just a quick tutorial showing you how to use a carousel component it's really quite easy to use so make sure to try it out yourself and create your own kind of sliders and as always have fun creating Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you some helpful tips in working with text and show you also how to import custom fonts into Create Studio. So to add text, simply click on the text icon up here or use Command T on your keyboard if you're on a Mac and you can add a text layer to your canvas and then go ahead and type in your text like so. You'll be able to see when you select your text, you've also got these quick links up here to adjust the font, adjust the text alignment, center your text on the canvas. You can also turn your text into a text box by clicking on word wrap. And when you do this, it basically gives you some extra control. So you can adjust the text to a text box like so. You can adjust the line spacing by dragging this control over here. You can also adjust the letter spacing by dragging this control like so. Now you can also, uh, if I adjust the alignment like this, you'll be able to see when I, t when I type, the text is basically set inside these boundaries. You can also adjust your text to be right to left, and this is great for, I believe it's he uh, Hebrew or Arabic languages. You can do that. You can also adjust the color over here. You can add a gradient. So let's say you want to have a multicolor gradient. Let's go and adjust this like that. And if you click on the gradient bar, you can also add extra colors as well. So you can have as many colors as you like on your gradient like this. And to import, custom fonts what you can do is if we go over to our fonts by clicking on this button here you see you've got your fonts here you can download fonts from Google as well so you can search for specific fonts and if you like one simply click on the download button over here and you see it adds the font to your font layer and also in your font library it's selected over here as well you can favorite your fonts and you see these are all our favorites that we've added and if you want to import custom fonts, simply click on the plus icon over here. And what you want to do is download a font file, either a TTF, OTF, WOFF, or WFOFF2. 
and then simply click on load folder and navigate to your folder that you want to import your fonts. So I'm going to go with, let's say this TTF one and click on open. It will import all the fonts inside that folder and the font weights and you can adjust the, the name of the weight before you import it and also adjust the font name. So I'm going to remove the TTF here and that looks good and what I'm going to do is click on import. Okay cool, so now what we can do is if I go over to the fonts, now if I just go ahead and search for that font, like so, you'll be able to see it selected and I can adjust the font weight really quickly and easily. So those are just some helpful tips in working with text inside of Create Studio. In this video we're going to run through compositions. Now compositions are basically when you group multiple layers. So what we can do is simply left click and select multiple layers on the canvas or on the timeline. And once it's selected, you can right click and group. And now we've got these multiple layers inside one group or a composition. And you can go ahead and resize them and animate the whole group of layers. Now once you create a composition or a group, you'll be able to see that you can now see the elements inside the group on the settings panel for your main group. So this enables you to quickly make edits uh, without having to go inside the group. So let's say you want to replace the media, you can go ahead and select a different video. Let's go back over here. And you can also make adjustments to the text. Let's say you want to type in, for example, groups. You can go ahead and just type it here. And if you want to go into more options, you can simply click on the label. So for the text, you can simply select text and you can make edits to the text. You can change the font. And you've got a whole bunch of other settings here as well. Now if you want to make more advanced editing, editing, what you can do is go into the group by simply double clicking on the group and now you'll be able to see that you're inside the group and you can make adjustments to each in, uh, individual layer. Now what you can also do is manually adjust the boundaries of your group. So if you deselect your layers by simply clicking on the canvas over here, you'll be able to see you've got group settings, boundaries. So what I can do is basically select a different type of resolution. Let's say I want to go with Facebook and that gives me a square resolution for my boundaries. You can also edit manually the boundaries of your group by simply, you know, simply selecting this like so. I'm going to go ahead with Facebook. So I've got a square resolution and I'm going to go back over to my main timeline and you'll be able to see that there isn't really anything updated on the canvas, but you can now see that the boundaries are square like so. So what we can do is to be able to make the most of the boundaries is simply select masked over here and when you mask the group you'll be able to see now that the media or layers outside of the boundaries that we created are now hidden and this is really cool because you can also once you mask a group you can go ahead and adjust the border radius like so and with a square you can make it into a circle like this and if I go back into the group and I select this layer, I'm going to go ahead and add a position animation. And you have to see that it slides in like so. And because we've masked this group, you won't see the text animate on the side. So now it's masked inside the group. And yeah, this enables you to create some really cool masking animations. And yeah, basically it gives you some more options in working with your groups. So those are the main options uh, in working with groups. You can also add animations onto your groups as well to animate a whole bunch of layers together. And yeah, this is just a quick tutorial on working with compositions. Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you some helpful tips in working in Create Studio Pro. Now, the first tip is to zoom into the timeline. Simply hover your mouse on the time bar and left click to the right to zoom in and left click to the left to zoom out. You can also go ahead and manually do it over here. And you can fit the timeline by clicking on this button over here. Tip number two, add blur. So you'll be able to see in this pineapple over here, if I just go to the effects and to blur and bring it down, it's just a pineapple image, but by adding the blur effect, it really creates a nice style to the actual design. So what you can do, if I just go out of here, I'm gonna go over like so and just change the background color. And I'm gonna go grab my logo. And you're about to see, I've got this logo design. So what I can do is go to effects, blur and drag it onto the actual design. And I might just make this color blue, for example, to see it a bit better. So if you go to effects, click on the blur 
and drag to the right, you can increase the blur. One thing you'll notice if your image has the boundaries quite close to the actual sides of the shape or the image, it creates this cut out lines which doesn't look too natural or nice. So to increase the actual size of the boundaries, what you can do is double click over here and simply drag out the mask like so. And this is gonna increase the blur radius. So if I go over it like so, and now you've got a really nice blur without those hard edges. You can also go ahead and actually animate the blur. So if you click on in animation, and you're about to see if it animates to the blur like so. And if you wanted to change it so that it starts blurred, you can go reverse animation. And if I just bring this down slightly, you have to see that it blurs back to normal, like so. Tip number three, apply a fill effect. Now I've got a white logo over here and I want to change the color of the logo. Usually I'd have to go into a design software and change the color and bring it back into Create Studio. What you can do is apply a fill effect by going to effects, color fill, and dragging and dropping that on your logo, image, or video. And you can go ahead and then change the color of your logo like so. You can also adjust the opacity and you can apply an in animation or an out animation if you want it to animate in with the color like so. Tip number four, keyboard shortcuts. Now shortcuts will help you to really speed up your workflow and you'll have to see we've got our shortcuts panel over here and you can view all the shortcuts that we've got. Some helpful ones that you might wanna use are one, to, that brings time indicator to the start, two, brings you to the end, zero, starts the preview from the start. We've also got F to fit the canvas. So if you're out like so, you can hit F and it'll bring the canvas back into view. We've also got ones like Shift T, which adds the text layer, Shift R to add a rectangle, and a whole bunch of other ones that you should make use of. You can simply go over here and search for specific ones as well, like for example, position animation. And if you hit P on your keyboard, you can add a position keyframe animation to go ahead and start animating. Tip number five, word wrap. So with the text box, we've got some really helpful commands and controls. And what you can do is simply type your text like so to have a simple text layer. But if you wanna make it into a word wrap or a paragraph box, simply click on word wrap over here. And this enables you to go ahead and wrap the text. So, so if you've got like a paragraph, it's, it's really good for that. And when your word wrap's turned on and you go ahead and adjust the side panel, you can adjust the word wrap. You can also drag from the left to adjust the letter spacing. And you can also drag the bottom to adjust the line spacing. We've also got options to go ahead and right to left if you've got a Hebrew or Arabic uh, text. And you can go ahead and adjust the color over here. You can adjust the alignment like so, and you can center your layer like this. Tip number six, importing media. So you can go ahead and also drag and drop files into Create Studio Pro like so. And another cool feature is copying and pasting files from your clipboard. So if you use Command Control Shift 4, you can go ahead and create a screenshot on a Mac like so. This is great for getting images for inspiration for your projects. And then if you use Command V, you can paste that screenshot directly into your media library. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with keyframes and create custom animations inside of Create Studio. So what we wanna do is go ahead and first create a position animation. And I've just gone ahead and added a circle from the shape menu over here. So if you wanna go ahead and do this with me, you can. So I've added my shape layer over here. And what I wanna do is create, first of all, a position animation. So I'm gonna move this shape, first of all, and place it over here. And I'm just gonna align it vertically so that it comes in on the same path and lands in the center. So what I wanna do is now go ahead and create a position animation. So I'm gonna to go to add animation. I'm gonna to go to properties and set the position animation activated on this layer, okay? So now at zero seconds on the timeline, you can see I've got these keyframes. At zero seconds, this shape is at this position on the canvas. So what we need to do now is set the second position or the end position of this shape, okay? So I'm gonna first go ahead and bring it up to one second. And with this keyframe selected, 
I'm gonna go ahead and move this now and set the end position over in the center, okay? So now at one second, this shape is in the center of the canvas and before at zero seconds, it was at this position over here. So that's how you can go ahead and create a simple position animation like so. You can also adjust the duration. So let's say we want it to take two seconds to go from here to here. You can just move that keyframe over and you'll be able to see now the animation's a lot slower. What we can also do is adjust the easing of this animation. And basically the easing is the type of movement or the speed in which the animation moves, okay? So if we want this animation to go at one set speed, I can simply select the linear animation like this. And what this will do is the animation will go from zero to two seconds and this shape will move at the exact same speed and will stop like so. Now if we want this animation to be a little bit different, what we could do is have it go fast, slow, then fast like this. See how it goes slow, fast, then slow like that. So I select that circ one. You can see that the animation moves a lot differently, okay? What we can also do is just apply the easing to the end of the animation by simply selecting out. And if I go ahead and let's say choose back, it's going to create this animation where it goes over and then it comes back in, okay? So let's preview that. And if I make it a bit faster, you about to see it a bit better. So let's say one second. And it goes like so. So it goes up and back. And last one, if I go ahead and select the elastic one, and I'm just going to bring this up to two seconds because it's quite fast. And I'll preview this. You can see I've got a really nice elastic looking animation. So what I'm going to do now is remove the animation. And I'm just going to center this shape. And what I want to do with this one is create a scale animation. And I might also create a, actually a, I'm going to go grab a square. I'm going to bring these borders down like this. And I'm going to create a scale and a rotation animation for this shape. So what I'm going to do is select the shape. And instead of clicking on this button, I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcuts S and R. And what that's going to do is activate the scale and rotation properties. And you'll be able to see if you go over to the keyboard shortcuts, you'll be able to see how you can use some of these quick shortcuts to speed up your animating. So now I've added two keyframes with scale and rotation added onto them. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this position. So at this position on the timeline, so let's say one second on the timeline, the shape is going to be this size and also it's going to be in this rotation. But now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the starting position at zero seconds. And at zero seconds, I want it to be rotated like this. And I also want it to be 0% scaled, okay? And let's see what it looks like. Cool. So you can see that it's scaling in and it starts like this and it scales and rotates in. Maybe I can go ahead and adjust those borders slightly. And that looks really cool. So I can also go ahead and adjust the easing again. And you could have something like back. And let's just preview this. And it looks really nice. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to use keyframes to create custom animations. Now if you're new to animating and you want to try something a little bit simpler for your animations, a great way to start is with motion presets. So I'm going to go and grab a square. And what you can do is if you go to motion, you about to see we've got these preset animations, which are really cool because you can simply just select one and it'll add it onto your layer with just a click. So let's say we want to go ahead and create the same type of animation. What we can do is go to, let's say, back up, and I'll preview this. You can see we've got that really nice looking bouncing type animation. And if we want to create that rotation as well, what we can do is simply select the animation preset, go to advanced settings, and adjust the rotation. So this is basically adjusting the starting rotation. And you're about to see now I've got that same animation with just a couple of clicks. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to go ahead and try it out for yourself. And as always, have fun creating. Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you some tips in working with masks. So first of all, you can basically place media, whether it be an image or a video, 
inside text or shapes and I'm just going to delete this to start from scratch. So what we can do is, let's say you want to add a video to your canvas and you want to crop your video. What you can do is double click on your media and you both see now we can go ahead and adjust the mask like so. And if you left click away from the media, you have to see now you've got your media that has been masked. And you can go ahead and also adjust the border radius. And you have to see you've got a really nice looking mask on your media. If you double click on the media again, you can go ahead and adjust the controls again for your mask. So you can play around with that. You can also select the media underneath and position it where you want, like so. And yeah, basically play around with cropping your media. If I go ahead, just go back over here, just undo. What we can also do is create a text mask. So if I go to text and just bring this up like so, I'm just gonna change the font and I'll center align it. And what I need to do is simply just drag this over like so, place to the start. And what I can do is simply select both of these layers by left clicking and dragging over the video and the text. And I'm gonna right click mask so you both see now we've got this video playing and it's playing inside the text. Now if we move this around, you're about to see that the video is attached to the actual text. But what we can also do is go over to the settings on the right panel and you both see you've got the option to detach mask. Now what this does is it enables you to move the text as the mask freely over the media and it's not going to move it along with the actual video. And so having this option, you can go ahead and animate your mask. So let's say you want to create that same animation that I had at the start. I could go, for example, to motion, scale down. And I'm going to bump up this to, let's say, 3000%. And if we just preview this, you have to see we've got this really nice animation. I can also go and edit the mask again by clicking over here. Now I want to go ahead and just position this center like so. Click away again. And we've got a really nice looking mask on our media. Now when you detach the mask, a good thing to do if I just center this again, and you've once you've added your animations, is to go ahead and just select your media and go group. And this enables you now to move the, the masked media as one whole element, okay? So you still got the nice detached mask animation, but if you want, you can move your text down like so. And yeah, you can play around with it a lot easier. If you go into the group again, you're about to see you can move your text mask. You can also adjust the boundaries. So let's say you wanna make it 1080p, like so. And if I just position like so, we can go ahead and still move this around like that. So there's just some quick tips in working with masks. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with media inside of Create Studio. So to import media, simply click on the folder icon and click on import and choose for the files that you wanna add. I'm gonna grab this one here and click on open. You can also import media by selecting files from your computer and simply dragging them into the app and dropping them. And when you want to use your file, simply drag it onto the canvas and you can hit play to preview. You can also save files into your global media library. Now this is really helpful when you've got things like logos or files that you use often. So to do that, simply right click on your file, copy to global. And over on the global library, you'll be able to see you've got the files that are saved for all your projects that you use in the future. You can simply access your global library and use these files on your projects. You can also create folders and this is helpful for organizing media. So I'm gonna right click on this and rename it and let's say images. And you can simply drag your files into your folders to quickly access them uh, when you're creating projects in the future. So thanks for watching and have fun creating. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with motion presets inside of Create Studio. So motion presets are basically preset animations which enable you to quickly create animations. So I've got my text here, and if you select any layer, you can see this motion tab. So click on this, and this is where you've got these preset animations. And if you click on the animation, you can see what it looks like. 
And if you want to apply it to your layer, you can simply select the checkbox and that will add the animation to your layer like that. I'm going to go ahead and choose a scale one. I'm going to go with elastic up. And you have to see that we've got this nice bouncing animation. On the timeline over here, you can also adjust the duration of the animation. So if I just zoom in a bit closer, you have to see that this animation lasts for about one second and I can drag this out let's say to make it two seconds and this is going to have a lot slower animation okay so what we can also do is if you click on the animation you have to see you've got these preset settings and with text you've also got some other options to animate your text by a paragraph by word or by letter so if we go by word you have to see that it animates on like so and if we select it again and go to letter you see that it animates one by one like so and you can really create some fun animations by simply adjusting these properties you can also adjust the offset and also go into advanced settings where you can adjust things like the starting rotation this position and things like that so this is more of an advanced option to really help you to create more advanced animations so let's say we want these letters instead of just coming straight in like this we want to make them come on with a little bit of a rotation. So what we can do is in the, with the advanced settings open, go to rotation and just drag this over slightly. And you'll be able to see now that it also rotates on like that. And let's just preview that. So it's looking really good. We can also go back in over here and you can adjust the easing of these properties as well. So if you want to have a slightly different easing for this animation, you can go ahead and select this and let's say you want to try something like bounce so if we go back over here you've got your rotation and we've chosen bounce and I'm just going to select out for this one and let's just preview what that looks like so you can really adjust your animations and create really unique looking animations and the great thing about this is that you can also save your preset animation so once you've made some adjustments to these presets you can type in a preset name, let's call this one Rotate Bounce. Give it whatever name you like and click on Save as Preset. Now when you go over to your saved options down here, you're about to see we've got this new preset that we've created. And in the future when we create other elements, we can add this same animation onto that element. So that's a bit about working with presets. You can also select the out animation. So Let's say you just want it to fade out, you can simply select that and you've got your, your layer animating on there just fading out. And you can also create looping animations. So these are just continual animations which go up and down for example or scale in and out. And you can apply these in between your layer, so animations, so let's say you want to select this one for in and out. You can bring this up like this and just preview that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. The best way to learn is to get started creating yourself. So go ahead and try this out and have fun creating. Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick tutorial on the pen tool. So if I go over to the pen tool up the top and what you wanna do is basically set points by left clicking anywhere on the canvas and you have to see you can draw out a shape like that. Once you've drawn it out, you can go ahead and add a background color. So by default, it, the fill is set to 0%, so you just want to bring up the fill like so. And then you can go ahead and add you know, a gradient or play around with the colors as you like. And you might want to go ahead and bring up that as well like so. Okay, cool. I'm going to remove the border from the shape. And if I want to go back into the shape and actually make some adjustments, I can simply double click on the shape and it brings up the edit mode again. And to basically round a corner, I can go ahead and double click on a point and you'll be able to see it gives me these controls here so I can drag these out and create a more fluid looking shape. So I'm just going to drag these out like so. You can also select the point and move it around. Double click on it again to adjust the corner. And if you want to revert back to just the point, what you can do is just double click on the point again to go back into that like so. And yeah, you can go through and basically adjust these points. And we've also got some information over here on how to adjust the points with the mouse or with your keyboard. And to exit the pen tool, simply click on the exit pen tool mode and you can go back into your shape and play around with it just as you would with the usual shape. 
So that's just a quick tutorial on using the pen tool inside of Create Studio. Hi, in this video we're going to run through the timeline. Now the timeline is probably the most important part of the editor because you do most of your work on here. So let me show you some quick tips and important things in working with the timeline. So first of all, to zoom in and out of the timeline, you can use this bar over here. Simply drag to the left to zoom out or drag to the right to zoom in. You can also fit the timeline to the content on the timeline by clicking on this button here. And a really helpful tip in zooming in and out of the timeline is if you hover your mouse on the time bar here and you click with your left mouse and hold to the left, you can zoom out. If you drag to the right, you can zoom in. And this is super helpful. You're really going to enjoy using this uh, when you're editing your videos. We've also got these quick buttons over here so you can jump to the start. You can jump to the end and you can also obviously go ahead and play and preview your video. We've also got some keyboard shortcuts like Command 1 if you're on a Mac to jump to the start, Command 2 to jump to the end. And if I zoom in over here, you have to see you can go up a frame using this button here. You can go back a frame using this one here. And you can see the current frame and the time that you're at over here. You can also add animations. So let's say you want to create a fade in animation. We can go ahead and add a keyframe. So let's select opacity and you can go through and adjust the opacity at the start and you'll see that it fades in like so. Now make sure to check out the keyframe custom animation tutorial to find out exactly how to use keyframes and to how to create different animations using custom animations. We've also got duplicate and cut so you can go ahead and use those buttons there or you can use the keyboard shortcuts and to find our keyboard shortcuts you'll have to see we've got this keyboard icon here so simply click on that you're about to see a whole bunch of shortcuts that you can use to really speed up your editing. We've also got our grids over here, which you can turn on and off. And we've got things like undo and redo. Also on the timeline, you can remove tracks by simply right clicking and remove track. Or you can right click and remove excess tracks to remove all unused tracks. So those are just some quick tips in working on the timeline. Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add transitions onto any layer inside of Create Studio. So simply go to the transitions tab over here and you'll be able to see a whole bunch of transitions and you can simply download these to add them onto your layers and hover your mouse to see a quick preview. So once you've got a transition, simply drag it onto your layer and you have to see that we've got this transition added like that. You can also click over here on the transition and you'll be able to see a preview and you can choose whether you want it to be enabled for the end and the beginning and you have to see I've got the transition like so. So if you want the transition to basically show and reveal the next layer, what you want to do is grab your video that you want to play next and place it underneath the transition. Okay. And if you zoom in a bit closer, you basically want to make sure that it's in line with the beginning of the transition. So here and as it transitions off you're about to see the media underneath that transition like so. So to preview this we've got a really nice transition. You can simply select the transition to make edits so you can turn it on and off like this. You can disable the entire transition and you can delete the transition as well like that. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to use transitions inside of Create Studio. In this video, we're going to run through a quick overview of the editor. I'm going to show you some of the main features and give you some helpful insights and tips to help you easily get started. Now for more in-depth tutorials, make sure to click over on this link here and you'll be able to find out more on how to use each of the elements inside Create Studio. Now to create your first project, simply click on New Project. You can choose the resolution that you like and you can go ahead and click on Create Project. So this is the main editor. It's really designed in a simplified way to make things really easy for you to create your videos. Over on the left side bar you've got your media panel where you can drag and drop media or click this button to import media into your project uh, folder. You've also got a studio panel over here which comes with a whole bunch of really nice designed assets like characters, uh, icons and effects that you can use inside your video. We've also got a music library here 
We've got a transitions panel where you can drag these transitions onto your elements to create some really nice effects. This is our effects panel and this is where you can drag and drop effects onto your layers. And once you do that, you'll be able to edit the effects over on the effects panel. So if I go ahead, for example, and add on the glitch effect, I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the layer. And you can see you've got your effects here. You can turn it on and off your effects and you can make adjustments to the effects by simply dragging out or inputting a different number over here. You've also got components and these are basically pre-built elements which help you to save a lot of time with these uh, yeah, basic components. So let's say for example a carousel, you can simply drag and drop this carousel onto your video. You've also got a bunch of really nice looking presets that you can switch between like this for example and you can just drag and drop your media your images onto these carousels and like so I'll just quickly show you like this and you can see how quickly and easily you've got this really nice looking carousel animation so components are basically smart elements that enable you to save a lot of time without having to manually animate or design these components for you now we've also got up on the top navigation bar, you can go back to your dashboard. You can also save your projects as, and you've got some other links here. We've got a pen tool where you can draw out your own uh, shapes. We've got a brush tool coming soon. We've got shapes and text, which you can add onto your canvas. Over here as well, we've got the grab tool, which enables you to grab the canvas, the selection tool, and we've got some preset zooms like so. You can center, and fit the canvas really quickly. You can save your projects, publish your projects as well. So once you've created your video, hit the publish button, choose your format and where you want to save it to. And this will open up a render queue where the video will start rendering and you can continue creating other videos while it's rendering. Over here we've got undo redo. We've also got some guides that you can uh, turn on and off and keyboard shortcuts, which are really helpful for quick editing so we've got for example undo redo you can use command one to bring to the start and a whole bunch of really helpful shortcuts you'll be able to view over here we've also got the cut button here duplicate add animation which are custom animations so you can add keyframes and make sure to check out these tutorials on how to use these features and that's just a quick overview of the app you'll be able to see you've got your timeline zoom like so you can also drag on the actual timeline like this to uh, basically zoom in and out of the timeline and yeah this is a quick overview of create studio so make sure to have a go yourself and check out our full tutorials to find out more about how to use each of the features to create your videos Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to publish your videos. So once you've gone ahead and created your video, what you want to do is go to publish and you can select the type of file you want to publish your video. So you can either go with MP4, you can go with WebM or MOV. And these two file formats allow you to export your video with the alpha transparent layer. So if you go and select transparency and this works if you don't have like a video or an image or a shape on the background so let's say you just want to export this lower third with it with transparency you can go with publish and select MOV or WebM and then make sure to turn on transparency and you can export this video with the transparency I'm gonna go back over here and just bring this up like that okay cool so what we can also do if we go to publish again you can export your video and you can also export in the video frame okay so if you want to save a thumbnail for example you could go with JPEG and then move the time indicator where you want to go ahead and take the image screenshot so let's say about here I can then go and select where I want to save it to and let's say go ahead and click on save and you can go ahead and preview the, the image like so got the image looks really good you can also go to open folder and preview where it's saved and we can also go ahead and then export our video, for example, as an MP4. So once I'm happy with this, I can go to select, I can click on save, and you'll be able to see that it opens up this new render queue. So the render queue basically enables you to render videos and continue editing and creating extra videos. So let's say you wanna go ahead and create 
I don't know, a different type of video, like maybe a vertical one. You could expand that up like so. Bring this over. Maybe place it like so. And then you can go ahead and click on publish again. And you can go ahead and select this and let's say vertical. And you'll be able to see we've exported the one already and now I've got another video in the queue. And you can have multiple videos in the queue uh, rendering while you're continually in editing your projects. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to publish videos inside of Create Studio.